Good evening everyone, welcome back to Motorcycle Fixer. This is the first video after I finally reached 1,000 subscribers. Thank you very much to everybody who subscribed. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, and I'm really proud of the way the channel is turning out. So thank you very much. I really hope that the videos help you and you enjoy them. Um, I know some people watch and they find it relaxing to watch people fix bikes. I mean, I know I watch a few people myself so thank you very much anyway for subscribing and liking keep watching the videos keep liking the videos um and i'll try and make content that you will hopefully you'll all enjoy this video is going to be carrying on with our z155 pit bike engine today we're going to be looking at putting the head on and setting the time in so it isn't too difficult, so carry on watching and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so I don't know if any of you remember where we left off with our Z55 rebuild. Um, we put the barrel on, we put the piston on, it all turns over nice, it's all lubricated up. Um, so we set it to top dead center there, as we always do when we're building an engine. And then we're going to put our cam chain guides in. So this is the one, um, that's the bottom cam chain guide. That block sits in, you, know, you see that, that block sits in there on our barrel. Then we've got our, this is the side, um, the cam chain tensioner side. You can see the dent in there where the cam chain tensioner sits. Which is clean. And this one goes down into there. And then there's a stepped bolt that looks like that. And that goes on this bottom part there. So that goes there. It's a shoulder bolt in there, um, usually shoulder bolts, so that you can tighten it up, but then still have movement on the actual, because um, when you need it to move, when the cam, you use a step bolt so that when you, after, when you tighten the step bolt up, you still got movement on your, um, cam, the cam chain tensioner sits in the hole there and it pushes down on it but you still want movement you don't want it to be solid so that's why they use a shoulder bolt I mean, and then we're just going to tighten that up so it doesn't come out you can see it's still loose so that's okay then we're going to fit our cam chain so we're going to put it over the crankshaft and push it up through the tube. It's easy then, it's the easiest way to do it is just put the magnet, there's a magnet on a stick. They don't need a pound on a market somewhere. Um, if they still have markets, I don't really know. Um, so you just put that down the tube and then feed it up until you can grab it. You see that, and then just Pull it the rest of the way. Make sure your chain then is on the bottom. Sprocket on the crankshaft. So there we are, that's the cam chain fitted. As you can see, it's just sitting there on the bottom sprocket. Okay. Then we need to fit the head gasket, so we're going to push it down over these um, head studs. So if you do need to just move the studs out of the way so you can fit it over, then we're going to move a cam chain up through there. So that's that. Then we've got our hollow dowels. We go one on this one on the back corner, and then one there on the front corner, there we are like that, and that'll hold our head gasket in place, 
as well. Then we're going to fit the head. What I've done with the head is I've wound the um, valve clearance adjuster bolts. I've wound them. As you can see, I've wound them all the way out so that I can I can turn the um, camshaft over without it actually compressing the springs. So it should it'll make it easier for me when I come to install it. So anyway. So we're going to fit that over our head studs like so but we need to make sure that we feed our cam chain up the, through the cam chain tunnel. So there we are. Just need to... It's a bit fiddly but okay we got it. There we are. Sometimes the studs catch on the inside of the of the head as you just wiggle it, so just wiggle it on, and that's all the way down. But will you try and keep this now from falling down the tunnel? Because if it falls down the tunnel, you've got to try and fish it out, which is yeah, it's easy enough for the magnet, but. If you can just stop if I'm falling, that's good. I've got this spring puller, I'll just hook it on <coughs> there, just a minute, just to keep it out of the way. And then we need to fit our washers and nuts onto the top of the studs. We've got some new washers and head bolts to go on so one thick, the thick washers on there I couldn't find the other one so I had to buy some new ones and then we've got these domed nuts to go on the same as any head nuts we're gonna, we want to do these up um, equally diagonally so that we don't just put pressure on one part of the gasket or we don't warp the head so we're going to do them um, there 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 you know cr crosswise as we've seen before so, so we're just going to do do them all up around the same kind of tension and then we're going to just do an eighth of a turn on each one. Like that. Like that. Like that. And for final tension. It says in the book for. 11 newton meters on these, but I don't seem tight enough this to make me guess, I suppose. It just got to be tight. You do get for a feel for it after a bit, I know. There we are, that's our head bolted on. We've got the two bolts now there that fit inside the tunnel. So that's these two long bolts. These fit down inside the tunnel in there. One in there. And 
and one in there. We need to tighten those up. Just gonna nip those ones up now. I've got my long bar on it. When tightening these ones, don't go obviously don't go mad with these because they are only M6 and they will just snap so. 10, 10 newton meters on these for tightening so that's plenty okay there's our head bolted on we've got the mark this is our, our top cam sprocket now we've got the mark either side these lines have to line up with the little triangle in in the head. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in. See and that triangle. So the lines on the sprocket have to line up with that triangle there. Okay. So all we need to do I know my piston is at top dead centre um, and the woodruff key is more or less pointing in the direction of the cylinder so that tells me it's more or less a top dead center so I'm going to put my top crank cam sprocket in the chain so that the line lines up with that little triangle or as close as I can get it another tooth and there we go that's fairly close so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these bolts in loosely And then I'm going to check that that's correct. So that's how we're bolted in. So for your for your bottom end timing, this is your um, timing mark, top dead center mark, and that has to line up with the line. On the casting see that cutout line there so that line when we put our flywheel on that's correct so that line has to line up with that line on there and then on our top end On our top end, this line has to line up with the triangle. So that actually looks like it's about right. Looks right to me. It might be like it's like about a, like quarter of a pin. So in between the pins, the line is on this pin, and it's like around there, where the triangle is. So 
nice little top dead center though there. Tighten the sprit the chain. So that there is a is set. What are we gonna do now? Check it. We're gonna put our ball ended Allen key down the spark plug one if I can find it. So there we are. And we're gonna turn. We're gonna rock the um flywheel, is that what it's called? Yeah, flywheel until that's the top dead center. Then we'll check the mark on our flywheel against the casting and that's fine and then we'll check our mark against the triangle on the, t on the head. All of those now are lined up and that's the timing done perfect. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the other bolt in here like so and then I'm just going to put our cam chain tensioner in so this is a this is the cam chain cam chain tensioner although the spring doesn't feel very strong in there I gotta be honest but it's it's locked in place once it's pushed forward anyway there's the, this little lever here sits in the ratchets on there if you can see that and then you can push it back but when it's in place it won't go back because of this little detent arm so what we want to do I'm gonna put a new gasket on there first so when we get when we set in this when we fit in this cam chain tensioner you want to sorry you want to take this bolt out of there with the spring Put that safe and we're going to push the little lever down there and we're going to push that all the way in okay then we're going to fit our new gasket and we're going to bolt that to the head then we're going to bolt it to the head with our two bolts so we're just going to tighten these up they don't need much pressure on these again the only M6 in aluminium I think it's 9 newton meters I think is the torque setting from Exactly now. Um, in the book it says six mil bolt and nut. Oh, it's ten newton meters actually. Six mil. Oh, six mil flange bolt and nut. Twelve newton meters. There we are. Okay. So you ju just nip it up, so it doesn't leak. Basically, make sure then that you've got your o-ring in there that's what stops the cam chain tensioner from leaking then you're going to put your spring and the um the bolt in the end we're going to push that in and then just tighten that up in place and that's what keeps our Cam chain tensioned. It's not a very good fit on it. There we are. We're just going to nip that up because it's an O ring. You don't really have to do it that tight. The O rings just compress with not a lot of pressure on them, and that's what stops the leak. So you don't have to tighten it a lot. What you need to do once you've got the cam chain tensioner in. So you've got your timing right. So what you really need to do then is just turn the engine over and make sure that it doesn't 
foul on anything. So there we are. You, what you don't want is for the piston to be hitting any of the valves and stopping the engine from turning. So there we are. So we know that it's perfectly safe as it is. Obviously do this without the spark plug in it because it's easier to turn it over by hand. So there we have it. Okay, so that's our video finished for today. That's the timing on our Z155 engine finished. The next video is just gonna be um, a quick one, doing our valve clearances. And basically, I'm gonna I'll put the stator plate on but then this engine is finished so i'm going to sell this engine if you want to see me do anything on this engine um as long as it's not a gearbox because i'm not taking it apart again um but if you want to see anything on this engine that i can get to if you've got any comments or any other videos you want to see me do leave a comment below please like the video um if you haven't already please subscribe and i'll see you again on the next one thank you very much for watching and i'll speak to you soon